Hey guys, welcome back to Pi Monk Basics. So today we're gonna make a double pendulum using joints. So here's a little bit of a simulation of a double pendulum. The movement is supposed to be a little bit chaotic and interesting. And so we'll try to simulate this using joints. So let's get started. Right here I have the regular script that we start with, which is just the basics of integrating PyMonk and PyGame. And you can find that in my integrating PyMonk and PyGame video. And from here, we're gonna start creating classes just like we've always done for the objects. So I'll start with saying class ball. And again, every class we have an init, and I'm gonna do this fast because we've done this plenty of times. And what's gonna be different about the two balls, maybe the X position and the Y. And within the init, we always create a body. So self.body equals pymonk.body, and we'll keep this as a dynamic body. And we need to set the body's position, which we're going to set it as X, Y. Sorry, that would be body.position. We'll set that as X, Y. And then, of course, we need a shape. And we'll do a circle, pymonk.circle. And the circle asks for the body. And the radius, which I guess is 10. Offset is going to be offset to position, which we want the center to be the position of the body. And we'll also need to set a shape dot density. And just for good measure, I guess we could set an elasticity. I don't think we're colliding with anything in this video. Elasticity equals 1. And the density doesn't matter because we're only going to have ball objects here. So we'll create a quick draw method as well. And I'm doing this fast again because I've done this plenty of times. So we have pi. Well, before we do that, we need to make sure that the position is integers. So uh, I'm going to create a function up here, which I've also done before, called convert. Convert coordinates. Spelling is always going to be my downfall. And we'll say return. And x stays the same, so point of 0. And then remember, actually, well, we do want to make this an integer. But remember for y, since the definition of the y value is different from pi monk and pi game, we're going to need to convert it. So 600 is going to be the display height. And we'll say 600 minus 0.1. But we're going to want all of this within parentheses so we can make it an integer. So if that's the case, then in the draw function here for ball, we can say pymonk dot draw dot circle, sorry, not pymonk, pygame dot draw dot circle display, and we've done this plenty of times. Color, I guess I'll make it red. Red is my favorite color. And then we have for a circle, we have position. So this is going to be convert coordinates of self dot body dot position. And then we need a radius, which I'll say is 10. And that should be good. So we'll create now instances of this ball. So I'll say ball one equals ball. And let's start this at 300, 300, I guess. And now to display it, first thing we want to do is create our background. And I'll create my background, I guess, as white. So that's 255, 255, 255. And then ball one dot draw. So this is all stuff we've done before. And we should get a ball on the screen. And we do. So let's create a second instance. I guess I'm going to try to move this maybe like here and create a second instance somewhere over here. So ball two equals ball. Um, I don't know. Let's do 200 for X. And then we want something kind of low. So 150 for Y. And then I said I'd move this up a little bit. So we'll move this to like 450, I guess. And we do need to draw this, ball2.draw. And let's run this and see where we're at. Perfect. Now let's create the strings themselves. And the strings are going to incorporate the joints that we need for PyMonk. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, I'm going to go over to the PyMonk documentation. And let's talk a little bit about how joints work. So to find the documentation for joints, it's going to be under constraint. And here we can talk a little bit about the different types of joints we have. So what joints are, are essentially a constraint on two bodies. So the two bodies are constrained in a certain way, and each one of these joints constrains in a different way. And you can watch this video in the PyMonk documentation, and I can also link this in the description so you can get a better visual sense on what the joints do. But 
for a written uh, description of them, we can just scroll down. And this is the base class for constraint. We don't want to use that. But let's start with a pin joint. A pin joint keeps two anchor points. The anchor points are points on the bodies, a set distance from one another. So the distance between the two bodies are set, which is exactly what we want for this double pendulum. Because the distance between the anchor point and the ball point is always going to be the same. Let me stop this. <laughs> it's always going to be the same. And same with this point and this point. So we'll have two pin joints, which are going to be our two strings. But if you can look through and you can find other joints that work for you, slide joint is uh, like a pin joint, but instead of fixed distance, it's like a minimum and maximum distance. So instead of like three pixels away, it's always going to be either two or four. And then depending on the physics of what's going on. And you can kind of look through these and get creative and figure out what you really want for your simulation or your game. But let's go ahead and get started on creating our strings. So again, just like anything that's an object in PyMocker Pi Game, I like to create classes and incorporate both aspects. So I could say class of string. And we need an init. And within the init, we need whatever is going to be different from the multiple instances that we're going to create for the string. So what's going to be different? Well, it's going to be what the string is attached to. So it either can be attached to the body or it can be attached to something in space. So what do I mean by that? For the pin joint that is going to represent the first string, we're going to attach this side to the body and this side to just some place in space where we decide to do that. When we're talking about this string, though, we're attaching it to two different bodies that we've created ourselves. Now, the problem with that is PyMuck expects two different bodies as the arguments for a pin joint. So I'm going to go back up here to pin joint and expects A and B, which are two bodies to connect. So how are we going to connect it to a random place in the simulation? Well, we can create a, another object here and create a new body here and use that. And that works just fine. Or PyMonk actually gives you a static body to work with within the uh, PyMonk space. And it's just kind of uh, a convenient body to use in case you need something like this. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So string, we need two different bodies. So I'm going to say body one and the attachment is what I'll call it. So body one is definitely going to be a body that we created. Attachment can be either a body or it can be just a position. And we should have an identifier, identifier. And this can either be the string body or the string position is what we'll implement. And so that way we can just create the string by just throwing the bodies in a body one and an attachment, or we can create it by using body one and position for attachment. So this is a kind of a neat little system I've created for that I think will work really well with your integration from PyMonk and PyGame. So to start, we should save the body. So I'll say self.body1 equals, well, body1. And then we need to do something different with attachment depending on the identifier. So I'll say if identifier equals body, then this is actually made very easy because all we need to do is create a pin joint to attach the two bodies. But first things first, I'll actually save self.body2 uh, as the attachment because the attachment is another body. And then we need to create the pin joint. So we'll do that with joint, I guess, equals pi monk dot pin joint. And then it expects A and B, which are the two bodies. So self.body1 and then self.body2. And then we have anchor points if we want the anchor points to be offset to the actual position of the body. So identifier, I spelled it incorrectly, I guess. Identifier. I have no idea if this is how you spell identifier. We're going to find out. And it is. Okay, good. <laughs> so we've created the joint with the two bodies and we're keeping the anchor point at the body's position by keeping it at zero zero default and that is if identifier is equal to body now else if we want if identifier is equal to i'm just going to say position 
then what we need to do is, like I said, either use the static body that's within the space, which, which we can access with space.staticBody, or we can just create our own body for this, which is what I'm going to do, is self.body2 is equal to a pymonk.body, and then we just want to create a static body for us. So that's body type equals pymonk dot body dot static. We've done this before with static body types. And then we can create a position for that static body as the attachment because the attachment is position right now, the attachment variable. And we don't need to create a shape to this. We don't need to do anything else with this except create our joint now. And in fact, the way I've written this, I guess I could just, because it's going to be self.body.2 regardless. So I can actually just do this for either identifier is body, and then we just have the attachment go straight to the body, or, and I spell identifier wrong again, or we're going to create our own body within the string class. And the last thing I have to do is add the joint to the space. And you may be thinking, well, do I have to add this body to the space? Well, we never add static bodies to the space anyway, right? And we're not creating a shape out of it because we never need this pretend body, I guess, to ever contribute to the physics simulation. It's just something to attach to the joint so it knows where to go. So space.add the joint. Great. And that's our init method. And then we have to draw. So define draw self. And but what are we going to draw? Well, we're going to draw a line, right? A string is a line between body one and body two or self.body one and self.body two. So first things first, I'll say pos1 for position 1 of body 1 is convert coordinates of self dot, and actually I can write it in like that, self dot body one dot position, and with the magic of copy and paste, we're going to do the same thing with self dot body 2 position, which is never going to change, it's just whatever attachment wants to begin with. And we could have saved that as uh, something as well. But just for the sake of cleanliness, I just kind of write it like this. And then pygame dot draw dot line display. And then we'll just do black as the color, zero, zero, zero. And then we need position one, position two. So the two positions of the bodies. And then a thickness of, let's do like five for now. I'm not sure if that's going to be good or not, but we'll see. So now we have the strings, and we need to create instances of the strings, just like we did of the ball. So I'll say string one is string, and then body one. So I'll do ball one, attachment, which I'll do ball two. So I've created, well, this is technically string two. So let's just create string one, which the attachment is going to be a position. And what's a good position? Let's try 300, 550, I guess. And then identifier, which is going to be position. So that way we can do this part of it. Now we can create string two. String, ball one, which is the first body, and then ball two now, instead of giving a position. And then the identifier can stay as body. So I'm not gonna actually put anything, but uh, if you want, you could write body in here, but that's the default value. Now, the last thing we have to do, always, 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 is going to be to actually run the draw method. So I'll say string one dot draw, and then string two dot draw. And let's run this and see what it looks like for us. Ball object has no attribute body. That's because we shouldn't be giving the ball object that we've created, we need to give it the body. So it's ball dot body, ball one dot body, ball two dot body, and so on and so forth. All right, because up here, we have the pin joint. This expects the body itself, not the entire object, just the body. So now I've run this, and we have our double pendulum. That is a really thick string, really, really thick string. So let's change the thickness down to like two. And that looks a little bit better. Now, obviously, it's not moving because we have no gravity. But before I do that, I'm actually going to shift this maybe a little bit off to the left. So the ball position of ball one can be like 200. And everything should shift with it, and it has. Oh, the problem with 200 is now it's like lined up here. So let's make this one 100, just to kind of look 
Okay, so this is a good starting position for our double pendulum. Now to simulate gravity, and I don't know if we've done this on this channel yet, so I'm going to kind of talk about it a little bit. It's very, very easy. We go up here where space is, and I'm going to say space.gravity equals, we have done this on this channel before, the bouncing ball. Uh, so I'll say zero, and then let's do negative 900. So you guys do know how to do this. And I'm going to run this, and we get nothing. If you've been watching very closely, you can see what the mistake is, which is we never added the ball to the space. So classic Pi Monk mistake, we need to add all our bodies to, and shapes to the space unless they are static bodies, right? So space.add body or self.body and self.shape. So this is under the ball class and the init method. Definitely make this adjustment. So now let's run this. And we have our double pendulum.